Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, my family, my illustrious family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Hey, y'all. First of all, let me wish all the brothers, all the brothers out there that are fathers, um, let me wish you a happy Father's Day. I hope that you um, make it a wonderful day. Some of y'all have made a lot of mistakes. Some of y'all are alienated and estranged from your children. or um, And I still want to wish you a happy Father's Day. There are some of y'all who um, don't understand and just have not um, em embellish how significant that role is for you. And it is an honor to uh, say Happy Father's Day to you. Because first of all, I noticed that when, be before it's Mother's Day, there's all kinds of um, advertisement. <laughs> there's all kinds of reminders. You know, and somebody might say the same thing for Father's Day, but I'm here to tell you, it's not even remotely close. <laughs> it's not remotely close. Um, and y'all have to do a better job of caping for us, and we have to be, do a better job of caping for you, even when it comes to the advertisement aspect of the game. Because I think we do okay in other areas. Okay, so I'm just talking about in the advertisement because it's, it's really whack. But with that being said, let me get off into what I was going to talk about. Um, and that is this police thing. And it is something that I really want y'all to really think about as we go forward. Um, the police unions are the problem, and the police departments, they are a serious problem. Anytime a 30 year budget is going to police you, is going to keep you in control, um, and not trying to figure out what the a problem is, and they always say police don't have time for that, well, then they should not be getting receiving a third of a taxpayer's budget. Because I don't think... And, that, that the police department should be funded by the people they're being beat, I mean funded in other words they're beating the same people that are funding their salaries excuse me but somehow it just don't make sense to me Okay, maybe it makes sense to some of y'all nuts out there but it really makes no sense that we, more specifically black people, we're paying taxes or a police department who brutalizes us, who murders us. That has got to stop. And I don't give a darn, like I said, all the great empires have fallen. And I don't care about anybody talking about a peaceful protest because there's no such thing as it. What, what is effective is power concedes nothing without a demand. That's what's effective. And right now, you have to seize this moment. We have to have a plan because, as you know, Willie Lynch, whether he's mythical or whether he's real, he said that we will be perpetually miserable for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years if we if they follow that blueprint, all the slave masters. So, so, so for some of you white people who don't have any idea what I'm talking about, why don't you read the Willie Lynch letter? Um, I think you would find that very interesting given um, the time we live in right now. So, what I wanted to really, really make clear um, about this particular video is that we have to be very careful with this because once this police department and stuff, which is really the slave catchers, uh, which is really the... Um, uh, 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 and I'm not talking about individual officers because you got good and bad, okay? And what I am trying to say is there's a system in place 
all those racist sheriff, racist politicians, racist um, police officers, they were there before um, the world starts, continues to evolve. So I do believe that we have a whole racist structure that has to be burnt down, shut down, replaced, um, or the end is going to be catastrophic. Okay? More specifically for black folk. Now, a lot of y'all don't know who Serpent Co. And I'm bringing him up, not any specific reason other than he a, was a white officer uh, and ended up being a detective who worked for NYPD and he was one of the good ones. And his story also shows and tells you what happens to the good ones. So here we are 40 years later talking the same crap. I'm just letting you know there's nothing new. Wash, rinse, repeat. And so, but for those of y'all who don't know who Serpico was, and like I said, I'm only using him because I need to make a coalition to let y'all know is that if white folks got a cold, black folks got AIDS. So, this is how diligent we have to be in knocking down this police union. Frank Serpico, the New York Police Department whistleblower who uncovered corruption and was shot in the face for it. In, in, in 1970s Brooklyn, idealistic cop Frank Serpico blew the whistle on bribery and crime within the force. And it almost cost him his life as his fellow officers turned on him. There's a movie uh, called Serpico, and in the opening scene from the movie, Al Pacino, who stars as the uh, character Serpico, tensely draws his revolver. Okay? Serpico is about to make an arrest at a heroin dealer's apartment. He kicks in the door, right? Waits for his fellow cops to assist. The drug dealer on the inside fires his gun and hits Frank Serpico right dead in his face. Now, although Hollywood dramas tend to make historical liberties, the real experience of Frank Serpico was really, really close to that scene. He says, even today it's very difficult for me to watch those scenes, which depict in a very realistic way and terrifying way what actually happened to me on February 3rd, 1971. But what series of events brought the brave cop to that heroin moment? He exposed the cop. Okay. Frank was born into an Italian-American family of, um, you know, in New York. Uh, young Serpico idolized the New York cops who patrolled his neighborhoods in the Bedford-Stuyvesant area in the section of Brooklyn. bed Serpico consequently joined the New York police force in 1959 in a bid to follow in the footsteps of all his childhood heroes. But for some reason, it seemed like Serpico didn't blend in with the other Brooklyn's uh, finest at the 81st Precinct. Serpico, he was a little flamboyant and charismatic. He enjoyed the finer aspects of life, like art, ballet, and the orchestra. A stark contrast to the macho conservatives uh, who made up the majority of the force. He also relished his job and sometimes made arrests when off duty or other cops or in other cops' territory. So those sorts, uh, so those Serpico loved his job 
and was good at it. A lot of the cops didn't appreciate his exuberance, you know what I'm saying? Um, his overzealousness to, to do this. Okay. So, and what's more, Serpico's spirit was slowly crushed as he witnessed the rampant corruption in his precinct. Cops were bribed by criminals, gamblers, thugs, and drug dealers with everything from free meals to money. Since 1971. His refusal to partake in these practices made Serpico all the more unpopular at his job. It didn't help that by 1967, the fed-up officer had begun to complain to the higher-ups in the city government about what he'd seen in the force. Hmm. And he childishly, immaturely, unwittingly, un he willingly gave up the names and places and officers alike. And he was actually aghast when no one seemed to listen. 